in the middle of making these little uh, monsters, pumpkin monsters, from, and I'm using Dollar Tree stuff, I'm going to make a quick video on how I'm doing it. So these ones are in the process of having the insides painted. Uh, but I've got these. So this is a Dollar Tree pumpkin, just the uh, foam pumpkins. And all I do is I take a screwdriver and poke a hole where I want an eyeball like that. And I want to avoid the seams. So you'll see there's these seams here. You want to avoid the seams. Uh, uh, so I'll go an eye there. Let's put an eye like right here. Seems like a good spot for an eye. So you got these two little holes. And then I'm just going to make a long, wide mouth. He's just going to have a straight across mouth. So you can see two holes there and then the mouth. And then I recommend you have some sort of a mask or respirator to do this. I'm not going to use one right now. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do this one real quick. I am in a fairly aerated area. But anyway, take a heat gun and then you point the heat gun at the holes that you've made. So we'll take the heat gun and you'll see it'll start to open up. So we got a hole there. Our hole there is opening up. And then we'll go across the mouth. And you can just keep heating it up until it starts to melt open. You might want to keep those strands there. I'm going to I'm probably going to break them off by opening it up even more. And then we'll open up that eye a little bit more and we'll open up this eye a little bit more. And I kind of like the look of that. I'll break off this little piece here and this little piece here. So this one's kind of like a little bit angry looking. It's still warm and pliable. You don't want to like go immediately into pushing this stuff around because you could burn yourself, but this is cooled off enough that I could kind of push it in. So there we go. Now I've got this little pumpkin face that is angry looking. So then what I've done is these are also from Dollar Tree. I've got, I've got these bones here like this. And I've got these little hands here like this. And you just use a glue gun, use a hot glue gun. And then I stick them on in different areas. So like this one, you can see I hot glued to the side there. I hot glued the foot on. I actually made the feet first and to cool them off. So I would, I put this on here, put a bunch of hot glue around it. And then I put it in the freezer and it cooled it off pretty quick. So I got it so it was somewhat solid Then put it in the freezer where it could stand up. And then I got these. So I've got this one that kind of has the short arms right there. This one, I just used one of the bird skeletons at Dollar Tree and then I just poked it up through the inside right there and hot glued around the neck. So that, there's that. And then I actually hot glued the wings up so it has that pose to it. Um, this one's just got legs sticking straight out the bottom. So that's how that one looks. I've got to repaint it. Uh, and then I've got this one that's a rat body on it. So this one right here, whoops, I accidentally heated it up too much and it got a hot spot through the top, which is okay, that's fine. Uh, but now, then I just take a brush, a paintbrush, and I use a little bit of a wet, a wettish paint so it fills in the gaps and I paint the inside of this black. Now you could use whatever color you want, but I wanted it black because I wanted some more contrast. And then I'm gonna paint the outside again in a different, in a little bit different color uh, orange because when you heat these up, you'll see it makes all these little pock marks right there. And I don't want the white to show through. So I just fill that with black or whatever color you want. And then I'll go over that again with 
the orange. For paint, I'm just using this acrylic paint. It's a little bit thick, so uh, in order to get down into the little holes and stuff, I get my brush just a little bit wet, put it in the paint so my paint is a little bit wet, and I find that that gets in and fills all the little pockets a lot easier. The more wet that the, the brush is, you don't want it completely watery because then it will be thinned out too much but it's a good way to quickly paint the inside. Doesn't have to be perfect. People aren't gonna be looking at the inside of these very much. Okay, so I've got them all painted up with a new coat of paint on them with the black on the inside. I didn't paint the top because nobody's gonna be seeing it from that angle. If you want, you can do that. A, a thing to note, I shouldn't have painted on the face. It took me several coats of paint to cover up that black. Should just used orange paint over it and filled in the gaps with that. Um, but you can see on this one, I decided to just hot glue those on the sides and I gave them a little tilt back. And because I tilted them back, I did give them a little hole. I guess it's a little bum hole. <laughs> so if water gets in, it can drain out. I also painted these green. So you can see I put green on those and then kind of did like a brownish on the hands. I'm not in love with how I painted them. Uh, so just experiment, do whatever you want. My philosophy on a lot of props is, hey, people, it's gonna be darker. People aren't gonna get up terribly close. So, uh, I mean, if, if this is like a display piece, by all means, do a much better paint job. But for a lot of stuff, I'm doing pretty messy, rough paint jobs on things because I just know people are gonna see them for a second uh, they're not going to look into the details as much, uh, but if you want to do details, go for it. Another thing I highly recommend are these. These are garden staples uh, that they staple down like the drop cloth, stuff like that. These are really great because these guys like to fall over. So all you have to do, stick these down, put this over the foot, stab that into the ground, and then you can see that's gonna be like locked really far down on the ground. I had them out there, wind was blowing on them and they were just fine. So I put one of those on each foot like that down into the ground and they hold perfect. So if you're looking for a way to stake these down and get them into whatever arrangement you want, that's a great way of doing it. Uh, same with like the, the little mouse body I can Put a stake on the foot or I could put it over the tail however however you want to stake them down these I actually use on a lot of my props to stake them down just because they're flush with the ground so they're not coming out and it, they hold really really well into the ground so these are super super useful so let me know what you think of this one super cheap prop takes a little bit of time you can do the paint you cannot do the paint uh, mix it up the, more than anything you can make it your own do your own thing with them uh, add more onto it, add arms, who knows, just make something cool out of cheap stuff and make it your own.